here are five reasons why Face Off is so damn good. Number five, insane premise. Could you imagine being in the meeting room when this movie was being pitched? We're going to have Nicolas Cage play a psychopath because I don't give a fuck. <laughs> at which point I'm already sold. But wait, it gets better. We'll then have John Travolta come in and switch bodies with Cage. So now we have John Travolta playing a crazy Nicolas Cage. Whee! <laughs> what a predicament. And Nicolas Cage playing John Travolta, who's playing a crazy Nicolas Cage. You could give a million writers a million years and they would never be able to top that. Number four, Nicolas Cage. Every movie starring Nicolas Cage is better than every movie not starring Nicolas Cage. And that is a science fact. This movie has him playing two roles, which makes it twice as good as any other movie. He starts off playing Caster Troy, a criminal mastermind and complete psychopath. Wow, we've got something in common. Okay, police man, don't shoot me. <laughs> I'm scared, Johnny. Then he plays as John Travolta's character playing Caster Troy. Just look at how subtly he gets you to believe that he's Caster Troy. I'm Caster Troy! Yeah! I'm Caster Troy! So subtle. He is so good at playing as John Travolta, playing him, you start to get the feeling that Cage might actually be sane. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Good job, Cage. We almost believed you were a real person for a second. Number three, crazy plot. If you thought they would be content with just the absurdity of the premise carrying the movie, then you are dead wrong. The plot takes the insanity and cranks it up to 11. It has FBI agent Sean Archer, sometimes played by John Travolta, who is after the insane criminal Caster Troy, sometimes played by Nicolas Cage. Archer manages to catch Caster and puts him into a coma. Now, as all good plots have, there's a bomb, and the only way to stop it is for Archer to become Caster by using a new cutting edge procedure that you really shouldn't think about too critically. Archer uses it to go undercover as Caster to get information about the bomb from Caster's brother. The real Caster then awakens from his coma, abducts the doctor that performed the procedure, and now he becomes Archer. They somehow took that insane premise and made it very believable. So now we have Caster as Archer. I won't tell mom if you don't. And Archer as Caster. You look like you just fucked your mother. Come on, right. let's go relax, huh? They infiltrate each other's lives where Caster gives helpful fatherly advice to Archer's daughter. Let Carl take his pants down. Slip this in his thigh, twist it. So the wound won't close. While Archer, for whatever reason, apologizes for things he didn't even do. I've said and done some things that made your life harder. I know. And because this is all so realistic, they crank it up a notch and reveal that Caster has a secret son that nobody knew about. And at the end of the movie, after Archer as Caster kills Caster as Archer, <laughs> He adopts Caster's son as a replacement for the son Caster killed at the beginning of the movie. Follow all that? No? Good. The entire movie seems like it was written on one massive coke binge, and god damn it, I love every second of it.
Number two, John Travolta. Travolta was given the challenge of a lifetime when he was asked to play Nicolas Cage, and it's safe to say he nailed it. If he's listening, I wouldn't mind giving him a message. Interception. Now our side's got the ball. Sorry. You turned your beeper off. Yes, well, my son's birthday. Your son was an accident. I wanted to kill you, but you took it so personally. Why didn't you just kill yourself or let it go? And the number one reason why Face Off is so damn good is the hilariously incompetent FBI. Most of the comedy in Face Off, Face off. comes from just how incompetent the FBI is. While the plan to switch faces is completely absurd, they make it worse by deciding that only four people are allowed to know about it. Because we're a covert anti-terrorism team that is so secret that when we snap our fingers, nothing happens. But why? The only person that can't know about it is in a prison so locked down, they brag about violating the Constitution and the Geneva Convention. You are now the property of Erewhon Prison. The Geneva Convention is void here. Amnesty International doesn't know we exist. This entire prison's one big magnetic field. The boots tell us where you are. Inmates can't even tell if it's day or night, much less the inner workings of FBI operations. Then, there's how secure they keep Caster Troy. He's a mass murdering, psychopathic terrorist, and yet he's left completely alone with nobody watching him. His breakout took absolutely zero planning. He literally just walked over to the phone and called his boys to come pick him up. He then abducts the doctor who performed the procedure, who was kind enough to leave a video documenting everything right next to where Caster, the terrorist, was. Nobody in the FBI was a double agent secretly working for Caster, this was pure incompetence. In the span of about two days, Caster has now infiltrated the FBI and sabotaged the mission completely by accident. Then, later in the movie, Caster as Archer then does a raid on Caster's home. That raid involves shooting an empty canister through a window and then just unloading a hail of gunfire into the apartment building with fully automatic weapons. They continue to blindly fire with their fully automatic machine guns even after their own people have breached the home and are inside the building. This is the most brazenly reckless and unconstitutional thing I have ever seen. Just look at this guy. He runs into a room that is empty and just randomly fires. What is he shooting at? I doubt he could tell you. Then he does it again while running up the stairs twice. Holy sh! If you don't believe that face off is so damn good, then I don't give a f. <laughs>